Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm so excited because I'm gonna be showing you how I make my new soap box sleeves using a Cricut. For the longest time, I had been wrapping my soaps using a biodegradable shrink wrap, and I knew for my rebrand, I wanted to move in a different direction, and this is what I came up with. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my entire process on how I package my soaps this way, and if that's something that you're interested in, then keep watching. But before I get into that, I wanted to briefly talk to you about why I decided to rebrand in the first place, and then secondly, also why I decided to do such a drastic change for my soap packaging. As I mentioned in the video where I talked about getting a new logo from Fiverr, I talked about how my previous branding didn't seem to fit not only my products, but me as a person. And the longer I've had this branding, the more I'm realizing that it's not really distinctive, meaning there are a lot of brands that look like mine. <laughs> And I'm not saying that these brands copied me in any way. I'm just saying that the longer I'm in this industry, the more I'm starting to realize how important it is to create a brand that people know at a glance. And I can safely say that with my old branding, I didn't have a company like that. I had a very generic, plain, boring type of branding that anyone could copy and also anyone could just do even if they weren't copying. So I wanted to rise to the challenge of creating a unique brand and that started with the logo and that is now trickling down into my packaging so that not only does my logo reflect my products but also my packaging reflects it too. And with these boxes I can safely say I haven't seen a soap brand that looks like this. And I'm excited to show you guys my other packaging choices for my other products. Stay tuned for that but today's video we're going to talk about how I did this with a Cricut. So without further ado, let me show you that process. <laughs> the type of paper we are going to be using today for our soap boxes is this stuff, and it's thicker than your typical cardstock. So this white cardstock paper is 110 pounds and 300 grams. And you definitely want a thicker cardstock for a couple of reasons. The first being protection of your beautiful soaps, but also you don't want it thin enough so that if there's any oil on your soaps that it soaks through and looks not great. <laughs> so to use that heavy cardstock for the Cricut, you're gonna need one of these mats. And this is the medium adhesion mat. And this will allow that thick cardstock paper to stick onto this guy so that it doesn't move around when the Cricut is cutting it. If you're going to be using your Cricut to be making boxes, I highly suggest that you invest in this guy. This is Cricut's scoring tool, which is different from their cutting tool, and it doesn't come with the machine, so you have to buy it separately, which I did. I purchased this separately, and it was one of the smartest decisions ever because it allows the machine to create the scores on your box instead of you having to do it manually yourself. And I'll show you exactly how the Cricut uses this scoring tool to make the boxes. Cricut uses what's called an SVG file in order to cut the various projects that you want the Cricut to cut. And there are a lot of different templates for boxes in Cricut itself but because my soap didn't exactly fit the dimensions of what Cricut had to offer, I went ahead and designed my own box using Adobe Illustrator. This video is not going to be about how I designed that box, um, but I will say that designing it in Illustrator was a huge challenge because it was a giant learning curve. But ever since I started to use Illustrator more and more, I am now finding that I'm turning to Illustrator a lot more when it comes to my business. And I'll probably make a video on that at a later time. But it's through Illustrator that I was not only able to make the line for the Cricut to cut, but also the lines that Cricut will need to make the scoring lines of the box. So once that design was complete, I uploaded it into Cricut Design Space. And once it was there, I had to do a few things. I had to double check and make sure that those score lines that I made in Illustrator were actually going to be read as score lines in Cricut Design Space so that the Cricut knows not to cut those lines. And I also had to attach everything together so that when I sent this to the machine, it looked at it as a cohesive project. If you don't attach them together, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. <laughs> so once everything looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and click make it and that will start to send the project to the Cricut Maker to cut. And after everything looks good on this page, I'm gonna click continue. And then it's going to ask me to select the material that I'm going to be making the soap boxes out of. And since it's that heavy cardstock, I'm going to select this heavy cardstock 100 pound option. And after I click that, it's gonna ask 
me to make sure I have my scoring tool in my Cricut Maker. And that's because I indicated in Design Space that I have score lines that I need um, scored. But before I can move forward, we need to load that paper into my Cricut. And that's what I'm going to be doing right here. And this is my medium adhesion Cricut mat. I'm just going to align the cardstock on this mat the same way that the preview is showing me in the Cricut design space. And then I'm gonna press down so that it doesn't move on this mat. And here I am showing you how easy it is to load the scoring tool. I just pop out my cutting tool, replace that with my scoring tool, and I close these clasps and that's it. So once everything is in place, the Cricut is going to start to flash the feed button. And once I press that, it's going to feed the Cricut mat into the Cricut. And what the Cricut is doing here is measuring the mat length. And it's also making sure that I actually loaded that scoring tool. And don't worry if you didn't do that properly, it's going to let you know and give you a chance to load it properly. And once everything looks good to the Cricut, it's going to flash the go button. And once you press that, that's going to trigger the scoring tool to start doing its thing. So now that the machine has scored our project, Cricut Design Space is now asking me to load the blade so that it can cut the boxes out. So this is what we end up with. And you can see that the Cricut has cut out my boxes really well. And now all that there is left to do is to assemble these boxes and that is so easy. Let me show you how easy that is. So the best way is to lift up the paper from the mat. And this is so satisfying. <laughs> I love doing that. And then we have Cricut's weeder tool, there is a very sharp point at the end of this tool, and I use that to lift up the paper from the mat. And then I use this tool to also pull out the little cutouts or bits that are left stuck on this mat. And this is what we have. So assembly of these boxes is also super easy. Where these score lines are is where you're going to be folding the box. So there's a fold here, there's a fold here, and here, and here, and then I have these little tabs at the edge that I'm also going to be folding over. Now remember, if you don't have that scoring tool, you're gonna have to make these score lines yourself in order to make the box easier to fold over. And this is a scoring tool that Cricut has that I used to use and yeah, it took way too long. <laughs> so there's one, I'm gonna do the other one right over here. Now I was hesitant to make boxes this way because I thought that it would take too long, that it would be annoying. But what I found instead is that this is incredibly therapeutic. I love it and it's really relaxing for me to assemble these boxes together. So now I have these two and I'm now going to tape them together using this tape dispenser. By the way, look how beautiful this tape dispenser is. I decided to splurge on myself on a $15 tape dispenser that looked really nice. <laughs> so to bring these together, I like to make the shape first. So there's this really large flap here that I put a piece of tape on lengthwise like that. And this is going to connect over and tape to the other side over here. So this might be awkward at first, but after a few hundred boxes, it 
is now becoming easier and easier. We're going to align the two sides together and then just tape that down. So now you have a box like this. And now we're going to tape the bottom side down in a similar way. So for over here, we're gonna put the tape down lengthwise like this. We're going to fold this down and bring this up and over just like that. And so you're left with a little soap box. <laughs> so to show you guys again, it's down the length of one side like that, fold it over like so, and then tape that edge down like that. And for the bottom flap, same thing, just add a piece of tape. I'm gonna make sure that these little tabs are tucked in before I fold it over like that and press down. And there you go. Here I have two of my soap bars that I've made. And because I've measured everything, these soaps slide right in to these boxes perfectly. And it's also super satisfying to slide these on. <laughs> so now that we have them in boxes, the next step is to label them. And I'll show you how I do that. So to stick the information onto our boxes, we are gonna be using some labels and my favorite kind of labels are the ones supplied by online labels. We're using two different types. We're using their two by one inch and this is their clear gloss for laser. And we're also using their two by two square inch and this is their white gloss for laser. I'm going to be using Maestro, their online label designer to place all of my designed labels onto the templates and then I'm gonna print them out and show you how they look like on these boxes. So the way that I chose these labels is I measured the box to see how much space I had. And the great thing about online labels is that there is a huge selection of label sizes. And I needed one that was two inches long and one inch tall, and they had one like that. So when it comes to labeling, I have two of the two by one inch label here that has both my soap information and my logo, which is two important things that you want to have in the very front of your product. So starting with my beautiful Georgian Bay soap, <laughs> I'm going to peel off my printed label. And for those wondering, I use a laser printer and that's linked in my description box below. Here's the label right here. And the way that I've designed my box is I have the outline of these words here and I'm just gonna line up my sticker to that. So I have my soap box over here and I have my label over here. I'm going to line this up with the outline. Just tape it down like that. And there is my company name right there. Next, I'm gonna put the information down here. And this is my Georgian Bay soap. <laughs> my best selling bar of soap is my Georgia Bay soap. And there you go, here is a labeled boxed soap. And on the back, I'm going to put the ingredients over here on my two inch by two inch white sticker label. But before I do that, I wanted to show you my French lavender soap and how that looks. So pretty. Here is my label going on. And there you go, how gorgeous and professional does that look? I love these little bear ears. <laughs>
So there you have it, gorgeous and unique soap boxes using a Cricut. This video is not sponsored by Cricut. I created these boxes and I was just super excited about them and wanted to show you what this machine is capable of. And if you are interested in getting your hands on a Cricut, I have a link in my description box below, so please check them out. I have a lot more exciting Cricut projects that I'm dying to show you guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> I also recently changed my soap recipe to a harder soap bar. And if you're interested in that recipe, that's over on my Patreon. Speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing, generous, awesome, especially these guys, my bubble BFFs. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement, your stories, and your questions. You do not know how much it means to me knowing that I'm not alone in this industry and this endeavor. And there's so many of you also doing this same thing as I am. It's just really, really nice. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I could not do it without you guys. So that is it. Until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome. Keep making beautiful, unique, amazing things like soap, sleeve, boxes, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.